I've created this video in the case that you weren't here for when we went through the task in class. But even if you were here, there's some quick references which will get you on track so you know what to do for Monday's lesson. So this is all about how to write anything. And the big skill here is that we are analysing and pulling apart the context of an article of our choice. Now, it can be any type of writing that you want, but you have to find something similar that you're going to analyse. And that's what this part is all about. So for my example, I'm going to do a video game review. I'm going to be talking through the process of what you need to do. And I'm also going to be modelling a PowerPoint that I want you to create. You would have started working on that if you were in class on Friday. And you'll keep working on that on Monday. And I've said that that's due on Wednesday. So that's the goal of what we're going to do. So every slide I show you is the same slide that I want you to create for your piece of writing. All right, so let's go through. So this is my piece of writing. The first thing I want you to do, and we didn't spend a lot of time on this on Friday, have a slide called purpose. And I just want you to think about what's the point of this article? What's it trying to do? And I want you to be as specific as you can. I've given you some examples you can look at there. The more detail, the better. I also want you to do a slide on audience. And I made the point on Friday, when it comes to audience, same deal, be really specific. Don't just say 13 year olds, for example, or 15 year olds or sort of whatever. Think about what do you expect the audience to already know? Are they already familiar with something? Do they have prior knowledge of the topic, that type of thing. Now we're gonna be looking at your article through three lenses and they link to the context continuum that we've worked on in class. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through each of the three steps and I want you to do these three things with the same piece of writing. I'm only using one paragraph. It doesn't have to be 500 words. You analyse that same paragraph three times. So the first time you are analysing it for field. Now field is about how accessible it is and whether or not anyone could just pick it up, read it, and know what it's about. So the task you need to do for field is you need to identify any words that would not be understood by an average person. In this article, and you can pause the video if you want to read it first, but in this article, let me show you some of the terms I've highlighted. So here you can see that there's some terms that are built around assumption, like the person who's written this assumes that the audience knows these words. And they should because they're gamers and that's the kind of person who's going to be reading it. But we're doing what's called a meta-analysis to understand the complexity of the writing. So a couple of examples, there's this word in there, souls-like. I've jumped ahead so you can just see these definitions. So souls-like was a word I didn't know when I read this. So it was inaccessible to me. And obviously the target audience for this article was different to me. So I had to look it up, so I googled that word and I learned that it was this type of game that's really hard and frustrating with lots of death and lots of repetition, but you sort of build skills by doing that. Now I had to look up the definition to that word because I didn't know it, but if, if you already knew what that meant, you can just create your own definition, okay? But what I want you to do is I want you to highlight the words that might not be accessible to a general or an average audience. Like imagine your parents or your grandparents or my grandparents, like if they picked it up and tried to read this, what are the words that they would say, oh, I don't know what this means. So I want you to highlight those words and I want you to provide definitions. There's two ways you can do it. It can look exactly like this slide that is right in front of you. You can make yours look exactly like this, or you can have one that's got the highlighting and you could put a slide after this with the definitions on there. Okay, I don't mind how you do it, but that's what I want to see, that you have identified those words and that you've provided definitions. And they don't have to be Google definitions, you can just write them if you know what it means. After each of the three sections, I want you to just have a slide that indicates to me where you think this piece of writing sits. Based on what we saw on the previous slide, we could see there were some words in there that you would not understand if you weren't a gamer. That being said, you could still read most of the article and it would make sense. It's not like reading something in a completely different language. So I have to give it a rating and my rating looks like this. So my rating in this case is saying there are parts of it that are inaccessible, but largely 
it makes sense. Like it mostly makes sense. It's got a little bit of things that make it inaccessible, but generally it's okay. I don't really mind where you put your piece of writing, but it should support what you show in your previous slide. So if you've shown that there's heaps of specialist language or prior knowledge expected, I would say it would be more inaccessible. If there's almost no specialist terms, I would say it would be more accessible. Okay, so you make that judgment and you show me that you understand. Tenor can be really complicated. So I've tried to make it really simple and stripped back for this task. All I really want you to think about is personal language. Okay, so the idea here is words like you, me, I, we, us, your, are all very personal language. They're the type, of, the type of language that we use when we're in conversation with somebody, we're gesturing to them, we're directing it specifically at them. What I'm suggesting for this activity is that the more personal language there is, the more casual it is, all right? If you want writing to be really formal, it shouldn't use any personal language. So those are the two extremes in this case. Similar to the field section, I just I want you to use highlighters or annotations or whatever you choose just to show me that you have looked over the piece of writing for personal language. Now I've added a little extra element in here and I'll just use uh, this pointer to show. I did also highlight these two things. Casual language uses more sort of apostrophes to combine words in order to make them just quicker and easier to say. That's that's an element of casualness. So I just highlighted those as well. If you don't highlight those, that's fine, but you can see I've highlighted three key terms, you, your own, and you. So within this paragraph, there are three pieces of personal language. So I need to make a judgment, just like I did in the previous point, and I want my judgment to, to make some sort of sense here. So I'm suggesting that if there was Heaps and heaps, like if every sentence had multiple cases of personal language in there and it was like me and I and you and us and we and I and you and just all over it, I would say that it's really casual, okay? If it had absolutely no personal language, I would say it's all the way to the other side, it's formal. This piece had three pieces of personal language in it and they were pretty spread out. So I'm going to make a judgment. I'm going to say that it's more formal then it is casual. I probably could have put my dot further towards formal, but it's not about you know the exact point of where you put your dot. It's about just showing you know one way or the other, and that supports what you have analysed in the text. The last section is going to be the trickiest section for you. I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. If you struggle with this, go back to the previous unit on avatars and have a look at those videos on noun groups and nominalization. Start with the noun groups one because you're going to need to be able to pick out nouns in this. You need to recognize that a noun can be more than one word. I'm going to show you this pretty quickly but again if you're struggling with it I'm going to make sure there's some extra resources to help you because I think most people are going to struggle the most with this part and I think that's understandable because it links to our new learning. I'm going to highlight all of the nouns and noun groups in this piece and it looks like this. All right so you can see just some of the nouns like now some of them are pretty short like Team Ninja is a noun. It's the name of the developer of this game. I can look down and I can see there's words here. I'll use my pointer. There's words like Sekiro and there's words like Dark Souls. You know, that's really simple. It's just that's the name of a game that's being referenced in this. Some of these are longer nouns and you can see that obviously by the length of the highlighting, but let's look at a couple of these together. When we talk about noun groups, you might remember that language of like pointer, descriptor, thing, you know, all of that kind of business, and that applies to this. So if you don't know that, you're going to find this really tricky, which is why I want you to learn it. So for example, if I look at this one here, this whole Souls-like genre thing, this is what we would call the pointer, okay? Whole is what we would call the describer in this case. The real thing that we're talking about is the genre, okay? And Souls-like is what we call a classifier in this case. Now, if I'm using these words and you are like, this makes no sense to me whatsoever, it's probably because you've missed the teaching on this in a previous unit, okay? So I don't want you to panic, 
but I do need you to go back so that you know this. The task itself is relatively simple once you can get your head around this idea of what is a noun and what is a noun group. Use one colour to show the nouns and you use another colour to show the verbs. This is what the final piece looks like. So these orange words, these are the actions, okay? You can say something, you can have something, you can do something, you can scratch something, you can craft something, you can tailor something. So all of these words are things that you can do, all right? And in the sentence, they play the role of the key action. Now you can do this the other way around, and we'll look at some different methods of doing this, but you might start by looking at the actions, and that's fine. What you've got to ask yourself is, what do those actions apply to? So if I just look at the second sentence here, I'll use my uh, pointer, Wolong Fallen Dynasty may not reach, okay, so that's the action, is not being able to reach something. So what can't it reach? It can't reach the same heights as Neo 2. So that's where we sort of see how the action links to the noun group, okay, but this is what you want to do. The judgment at the end of the day is, are there more nouns here than there are verbs? Now, I would suggest based on just looking at the colours in this example, there are more nouns than there are verbs. The verbs are pretty spread out. The nouns are sort of everywhere. The rule here is, if there are more nouns than there are verbs, then it's more written. If there are more verbs than there are nouns, then it's more spoken. So at the moment, I would suggest I can see more nouns, more complicated, longer nouns. More words are associated with nouns than they are with verbs. So therefore, it's more written. If I could show all of these verbs and there was just there was less nouns or the nouns were just really short, simple little things and the colour difference changed, then I would move it more towards spoken. I mentioned this is going to be the, maybe the trickiest part for you, so hopefully you get your head around that. At the end of the PowerPoint that you're going to make for me, and yours it should look really similar to mine, I'll give you a template to work through, but at the end of it, I want you to then show all three, so you can see here's the field, the tenor, and the mode. I'm basically just copy-pasting this information from the previous slides, putting it all onto one, and this is the end. I want you to tell me what is your verdict as to the context of your piece of writing.